Hey, how's it going, guys? So, I know it's been a while since we did one of these, but like I said, I was playing a lot of Old Republic, and also I've been playing uh, Frostpunk. So, with two games, and just like editing here and there, just like getting those videos out. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my voice. Getting those videos out, it took up a lot of time. So, anyways, welcome back, guys. If you're new to your channel, welcome. So, now this video is talking about the monumental collapse of the Sith, uh, the ancient Sith. So I guess there's a Sith and an ancient Sith, I guess. Uh, the ancient Sith and like how they uh, survived. So that's what we're gonna look into and see what happened. But I don't remember what happened last time uh, besides uh, there was like a big Sith uh, civil war in Naga Sadao and uh, people like them. But anyways, and I just wanna let you guys know if you guys haven't seen in the other videos. So in the other videos, I actually have been switching up with my camera angles. I've been using my phone now as a camera. So right now I'm using this as a webcam. Uh, what I like about the webcam is the angle, but what I like about my phone is my um, quality because it's a lot more clear and everything. So I ordered a phone mount for uh, putting it into that angle. But the problem is um, the shipment got delayed because right now, with the high traffic deliveries because of Christmas and New Year's, it, it got delayed, so that's why. So please bear with me, but I'm going to be using my phone, so if the camera angle looks a little different, that is why. But anyways, I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen in this video, so without anything else, let's get into it. In 5000 BBY, the Sith returned to the Republic for the first time in millennia in the Great Hyperspace War, a surprise assault on the Core Worlds that nearly saw the Sith Empire topple the Galactic Senate. But the Sith lost that war, and their forces were further ravaged by infighting between Dark Lords Naga Sadal and Ludo Kresh, dooming the That's whole That's why the Republic Sith keeps Empire. winning. In this chapter, in the history of the Sith, we'll be telling the story of how the aftermath of the Great Hyperspace War destroyed the ancient Sith, and of how the teachings of the Sith survived to curse a new generation. Classic. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The Great Hyperspace War ended with the Battle of Korriban, in which the forces of Naga Sadao destroyed Ludo Kresh and his followers, but were then wiped off the map by Empress Teta. But Supreme Chancellor Poltimo of the Galactic Senate was unwilling to let things end there. He ordered the mobilization of the entire Republic Navy for a full-scale invasion of Sith space. Accompanied by the Jedi, wow. the forces of the Republic were ordered to completely dismantle the Sith Empire. The invasion couldn't have come at a worse time for the Sith. They barely had a fleet left to defend their skies with, and many Masasi Sith adepts and war beasts had died in the Great Hyperspace War. Ludo Kresh was oh, dead, wow. as were many other Sith Lords, and Naga Sadao had vanished. As we discussed in the last episode, he had fled to Yavin 4, though a tomb in the Valley of the Dark Lords was still sealed in his honor. Sith Lord Shah Darkhan, who had been Naga Sadao's second in command, became acting Dark Lord of the Sith, but he proved unable to rally the remaining forces of the doomed Sith Empire. As the Republic invasion began, Shah Darkhan ordered the Masasi to fight to the last man, which held the Republic back for a time and allowed many factions of the Sith to flee the Sith Empire entirely. But before long, the might of the Republic and the Jedi proved too much even for the blind battle fury of the Masasi. That is crazy. After a few years of fighting, the Sith Empire ceased to exist, and virtually all of the Sith worlds were rendered depopulated ruins. Neither the Republic nor the Jedi carried out a genocide of the Sith, as is sometimes claimed, but nonetheless, the campaign all but eradicated the Sith purebloods. Those Sith who didn't fight to the death killed oh, themselves wow. in mass ritual suicides, depopulating their homeworlds one by one. By the time the Republic had won, it seemed that there wasn't a single Sith left alive in the entire Empire. Zyos, Korriban, and many other worlds were left desolate, home only to beasts and the crumbling ruins of the once mighty Sith Empire. Many Sith remnants escaped this bloodbath, however. Some Sith fled to distant Tund, a world the Dark Lords had used as a prison for heretics. Yo, that Chancellor's ruthless. Thul, 
a Sith fortress world home to a community of elite Masasi just outside the Stygian Caldera. Others still regrouped on the acidic Republic world Vujun, where they intermarried with local human aristocrats and secretly passed Sith teachings onto new generations. Nagasadao, as we mentioned last episode, retreated to Yavin 4 with a ship full of Masasi warriors, and there was evidence that another, more radical faction of the Sith had gathered large numbers of Sith purebloods at Malachor 5 before fleeing into the unknown regions. Despite the existence of these oh. many holdouts, the Republic and the Jedi Order had nonetheless dealt a near fatal blow to the Sith. Their empire was gone, their base of power was shattered, and many of their teachings and artifacts were lost thanks to the Jedi Shadows, who combed the ruins of Sith worlds for any trace of the Sith teachings. The Jedi destroyed a great deal, hoping to prevent future Darksiders from learning the ways of the Sith, though they also preserved many holocrons and scrolls in the vaults of the Great Library on Ossus and the Galactic Museum on Coruscant. But though Jedi were able to all but vanquish the Sith, the dark side wouldn't remain dormant forever. Some of the Sith holdouts planned an immediate counterattack against the Republic, with the most notable being the one masterminded by Ludo Kresh's son, Elcho. Having built a fleet of pirates and mercenaries, Kresh the Younger sought revenge against the Republic. He looks scary. The night before the attack was to begin, he partied too hard and died of a ruptured stomach, and his followers <laughs> abandoned the attempt. The other Sith were smart wow. enough to realize that they would be unable to get their revenge anytime soon, and so instead they opted to bide their time, waiting for what they saw as the inevitable resurgence of the dark side. They waited for centuries, and in this time, some of the Sith remnants dissolved, as happened on Vajun and Tund. But on Thul and Yavin 4, the Masasi and their remaining leaders waited patiently for their chance at revenge. On Yavin, where the Dark Lord of the Sith himself still lived, Nagasadao's followers built great temples in the forest, where their master spent years continuing his studies into Sith alchemy. After several decades of this, Sadao ended up placing himself into suspended animation, vowing to awaken when the dark side had returned. Naga Sadao slept for over 500 years, until a young Jedi named Frieda Nad arrived on Yavin. Frieda Nad was a prodigy. Early in his training, the Jedi Masters on Ossus recognized that he was incredibly strong in the Force, more so than any other student they had seen for centuries. Nad had a gift. Wow. And he Freedom knew it, there. dreaming of becoming the greatest Jedi that had ever lived. But the Jedi Masters saw his pride, and they refused to make Nad a Jedi Knight until he learned humility. Freedom Nad was outraged by this, and in his arrogance, he believed the Jedi were deliberately holding him back for fear of his power. In a fit of rage, he killed his master and abandoned the Order. Still furious of at course. the Jedi, Freed and Nad vowed to learn the ways of the Sith out of spite. He traveled to the ruins of Sith space, and on the Sith world Ashas Re, he discovered an artifact that the Jedi had missed, the holocron of the ancient King Adas. Nad learned much of the dark side from Adas's holocron, and in Sith space, he also found clues that led him to Yavin 4. Nad traveled to the forest moon, where he was attacked on sight by the Masasi. However, Nad was able to hold his own, and the Masasi eventually relented, allowing him to access their temples. There, Nad discovered and awakened Naga Sadao, who took the young Dark Jedi as an apprentice. Naga Sadao taught oh. Freedom Nad everything he knew, and Nad spent years on Yavin 4 learning from the Dark Lord. Eventually, however, Sadao had nothing left to teach Nad, and so the Dark Jedi killed his master, usurping the title of Dark Lord of the Sith. Freedom Nad of abandoned course. Yavin and returned to Republic space, looking for a world of his own to conquer. Ultimately, he settled on Onderon. Onderon was a jungle world dominated oh, by vicious beasts, home to only a single settlement, the walled city of Aziz. The city had been built by a group of human settlers that had crashed on the planet 
Yeah, we've been forced to stick together. Uh, I know to that uh, place from the, uh, the Clone Wars. Centuries it was in later, a Clone Wars episode. Even after Aziz had blossomed into a fully fledged civilization, the city was still an island of safety on a wild world. 4,400 years before the Battle of Yavin, using the power of the dark side and the promise of more advanced technology, Fridanad conquered Aziz, overthrowing the existing government That's a cool and setting outfit. himself up as an absolute monarch. Fridanad's reign as king of Aziz was long and brutal. He transformed Onderonian society, deeply embedding Sith teachings and ideology into the planet's culture and national consciousness, allowing him to keep the people of Aziz in line despite his brutality. All those who dared resist Freedom Nad were cast out of Aziz to fend for themselves in the jungles. This was deemed the same as a death sentence on Aziz, but some of these exiled rebels managed to survive by taming Onderon's ferocious beasts. They became the Beast Riders, a rival society that opposed the Sith and the Dark Side, and they waged war against Aziz. The conflict between the Nardists and the Beast Riders lasted for decades, and the situation on the planet worsened until finally, after more than a century of Nad's tyranny, the Jedi caught wind of what was happening on Onderon and intervened. In the pitched it battle took them a century. Followed, many Jedi were slain, but in the end, Freed and Nad, King of Aziz and Dark Lord of the Sith, was defeated. The death of Freed and Nad ended an unbroken chain of Dark Lords of the Sith that had been maintained since Ajunta Pal, and the Jedi believed that it would mean the end of the Dark Side's influence on Onderon. But the threat of Freed and Nad didn't end with his death. Nad's spirit lived on, and in the ensuing centuries, it continued to exert influence over Aziz. The Sith Triumvirate. Subsequent Onderonian monarchs were directly descended from Nad, and they continued to serve the Dark Side in secret, guided by the spectre of their dead ancestor. Aziz, as a whole, remained dominated by Nadist ideology and practices, though the Onderonians kept this a secret. It was during this period, after the death of Freed and Nad, that the Dark Side steadily began to rise again in the greater galaxy. In 4250 BBY, there was even a third great schism in the Jedi Order, though this conflict was resolved quickly as the Dark Jedi all accidentally destroyed themselves and an entire star system in the Volta Cataclysm that same year. But Onderon remained at the heart of this new rising tide of darkness, and in 4000 BBY, it laid the groundwork for the resurgence of the Sith. The Jedi and the Republic were unaware of the continued rule of the Nadists, but the Beast Riders were not. They continued their wars with Aziz, seeking to unseat Nad's descendants. By 4000 BBY, the Beast Wars of Onderon had intensified to such a point that Queen Aminoa, despite being a Nadist, requested Jedi intervention, painting the Beast Riders as lawless raiders preying on an innocent civilization. Jedi Master Arka Jeth dispatched a team of apprentices led by Ulik Keldrummer to help resolve the conflict, and the Jedi initially bought into Aminoa's story, especially after her daughter, Princess Galia, was abducted by the Beast Riders. But when the Jedi tried to rescue Galia, they learned the truth of the situation. Galia, it turned out, had willingly defected to the Beast Riders. She planned to marry Oron Kira, the Beast Riders' own prince, and then overthrow her Nardist mother. The Jedi ultimately agreed to help the Beast Riders overthrow Aminoa, and with the last minute help of Arka Jeth, they were successful. Aminoa was slain, and Galia and Oron Kira became the new monarchs of Onderon. But not even this was enough to drive the dark side from Onderon. Two years later, the Jedi attempted to relocate the sacrifice of Freed and Nad and Queen Aminoa to Duxin, Onderon's fourth moon, only to be met with a mass uprising of Nardists in Aziz. Led by King Omen, Aminoa's presumed dead husband, and the Dark Jedi Wab Null, the Nardists took back the Sacrifagi and attempted to There's so many names. Aziz. However, the Jedi called in support from the Republic and the rest of the Order, allowing them to put down the Nardist revolt. Wab Null was slain by Ulik Keldrema, who refused to grant the Dark Jedi mercy after defeating him. And in the end, King Omen was slain as well. Their spirits, and that of Freed and Nad, were all banished to Duxin. But during the Nardist revolt, two visitors had managed to slip into Aziz, hoping to meet with King Omen. They were cousins Satal and Ali Makito, 
both aristocrats from Chorus Major in the recently renamed Empress Teta system. They were also the leaders of a dark side cult called the Kroth, and they revered the Sith, collecting all the Sith lore and artifacts they could get their hands on. Both were gifted with the Force, and they sought to learn Sith techniques from Omen. The spirit of Frieden Nad saw oh. great potential in the young Force adepts, and he instructed Omen to give them a bunch of Sith scrolls and artifacts, including a powerful amulet that had once belonged to Naga Sadal. Nad helped the cousins escape Aziz before his banishment by the Jedi. Even as Onderon was freed from the Dark Side's grip, the Ketos returned to their home system. There, they and their Kroth followers learned many ancient Sith techniques from the scrolls they had taken on Onderon. The Dark Side was still only growing stronger, and it wouldn't be long before the Dark Lords of the Sith returned. But that's a story for another time. Namely, next week, when we continue our series on the history of the Sith. But what do you think? All right. Would you like to see more content? Okay, so that was really cool to watch. So what I learned from this video was uh, the Supreme Chancellor of the Senate at this time was pretty br uh, brutal and ruthless. Just saying like, hey, just send everyone and wipe them out. And the Sith were pretty weak from all the civil wars and uh, like infighting conflicts they were having for like who's going to like claim power. And looks like they almost went extinct. And on top of that, uh, when like the re remaining survivors like all scattered, uh, what I learned from that was like how Yavin 4 was a very uh, powerful place for like uh, for the Sith, because I remember when I watched uh, the fourth episode of Star Wars: The New Hope, uh, Yavin 4. Basically, uh, I mean like there was no like indications of like old or ancient Sith there, and I didn't expect like that place could could hold like such a significance so basically when in episode 4 when the death star will almost destroy Davin 4 they basically destroyed an old place uh, like a really uh, historical place for ancient Sith and on top of that it looks like uh, I had a feeling like when they had destroyed all the artifacts and like scrolls when the Jedi did all that it was really obvious like someone was gonna turn over because basically if I learned anything from the movies and comics I mean, well, I didn't read that many comics, comics, and also like uh, Clone Wars. The Jedi, will, will, there's always going to be at least one Jedi that will turn over to the dark side and continue the Sith tradition. So that's what happened. And the location Onderon is was mentioned a lot. I think that was like most of this video. Uh, the place Onderon. I do remember that place from the. Oh, I forgot. Uh, um, it was in the Clone Wars. Um, oh, Saw Guerrero. Where they uh, t taught Saw because I mean, like, I'm pretty sure Saw Gerrero's homeworld was Onderon, but I remember that place where the Separatists had, like, a puppet king in place, and they were just, like, ruling over it. So that's the first place I learned about that uh, planet, Onderon. But I did not know there were, like, Beast Riders or, like, Sith Cults or anything like that. So this was an amazing video, and I'm really excited to see what happens next. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this video as I did. And keep an eye out for more content. And again, thank you guys so much for your guys continued support in this channel. Because I'm like, I really can't believe like it's still growing. It, it's amazing to see. So again, thank you guys so much. And I hope you guys are having an amazing day or night wherever you guys are. And I'll see you guys next time.